market NSFW. All right, one hunk of crap removed. Time to put the good stuff on, boys. We are almost done. All we gotta do, we're gonna put the front grill on and the little plastic radiator top cover up here. But other than that, Project Storm. She looks like a hot rod, boys. Holly intake, Holly high ram, all the way installed. fam i hope everybody's having a blessed day out there it is sunday morning and we have project storm in the shop and we are about to transform project storm from every day to a badass hot rod look a lot of you guys been waiting for it well we finally have the time we're going to get the holly high ram installed on project storm so we're going to have a very good video on what you need as far as fittings, uh, you know, adapters, whatnot, to fit the Holly High Ram onto basically a stock Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi. Now, a lot of you guys know we have the Torque Storm Supercharger installed on Storm, but other than that, it's pretty much stock beside uh, Texas Speed Long Tubes and now a Holly High Ram. And the other thing, as in previous videos, we have the intercooler that was on Frostbite, which is my old air-to-air -air intercooler. And then all of the uh, custom piping that I put together and welded up myself. So all of that's going on the storm. We're gonna have an intercooler. So we're not just relying on meth injection anymore. Um, we're still using meth injection, but now we have an air-to-air -air intercooler, which will help things out tremendously as this is a very, very daily driver truck. Um, gets driven every single day. Definitely stoked to see what this thing's gonna look like after we put the Holly on it and the track time difference that we see from the old setup with just meth injection to having an intercooler and the Holly High Ram. So stay tuned, we're gonna get into it. So before we put on the Holly High Ram, we're gonna give you a little before footage of what it looks like currently on the stock manifold. Pretty basic, not much to look at besides obviously the Torque Storm Supercharger. So we're gonna change that. Holly High Ram going on. We have the intercooler already mounted um, as you've seen in the previous video. That's the Holly High Ram lower manifold. This is the top of, uh, this is the lid right here. This is the new fuel rails. Um, we got some fittings in here, the map sensor crossover line. We're going to go over all of this stuff. And then these are my intercooler pipes that I built. Um, I custom did and welded up myself. Now this is not aluminum pipe. Um, this is stainless steel pipe that I welded up. And then I had my local powder coater shop powder coat them for me. Um, so this is what we're putting on for Project Storm. So let's start tearing off the old and on with the awesome new stuff. All right, so one thing off, we have the uh, old breather hose going to the PVC valve. You're going to take that hose off and pretty much put it down there on the floor. Not going to need it no more. Next up, we're basically undoing everything on the old manifold, wire connections, uh, vacuum hoses, uh, fuel line going to the fuel rail. All that's got to be unplugged and then we will start removing the bolts that holds the actual manifold down you do not need to remove your throttle body as of right now you can just leave it on the old manifold and remove it all as one assembly and then once we get on the table we can transfer the throttle body to the new holly manifold um, you got a couple of vacuum lines right here behind the old throttle body you're going to unplug them 
and then just kind of lay them over to the side. Uh, next up, we're going to need to unplug all the fuel injector connectors. You got four on each side because, you know, it's a Hemi V8. We got eight of them bad boys. So uh, once we unplug all the fuel injector connectors, then you have your... Yeah. Your fuel line that plugs onto the old fuel rails. Um, you're going to need a special tool for that. We'll show you what that is in a second. Um, pop that off and then just kind of lay it over to the side. And then also, on if you're in front of the truck, on the back of the stock manifold, on the left side or passenger side corner, your old map sensor back there in the corner will be back there. We've already removed this one, but you're gonna need to unplug that connector. And then you'll have another connector on the back of the manifold that is for, that's for the electronic intake runners on the stock manifold. Um, as these have, the old manifold has runners that activate at certain RPM ranges. Um, so there is a connector on the back of the manifold for that and you're gonna need to unplug that as well. Now, as you can see, this is kind of how we work on the truck. You remove the electric fan, remove the fan clutch, which we've already did that. Um, and this, this truck does not have a fan clutch anyways as we deleted it and we run the V6 style electric fan to cool it. Um, so when you remove the fan and the fan clutch, you have a lot of room to stand in the truck and it makes working on it much, much easier. So that's where we're at. We're gonna grab some more tools start taking some more stuff off. Right now we are removing the eight millimeter intake manifold bolts. After we get all those out, we are gonna stop and run to the house real quick to get my fuel line disconnect tools because we just realized they're at home and we don't have them. All right, we have all the bolts out of the old intake manifold. Everything's unplugged. As you can see, we kind of have it pulled up right here. And that's kind of what we did. Um, you just kind of pull it out to about this point and then kind of lean it towards the passenger side. That way you can reach back behind it and unplug the intake runner unplug the electric intake runner plug that's on the very back of the manifold and it's kind of a pain in the butt because it does have one of those red safety clips that you have to unlock um, to unplug it so it's kind of a you reach back there and kind of feel it thing um, you really can't see it so um, that's probably the worst part of this so far um, other than that you can see we have the fuel line unhooked which is right there um, and then plugs on to the factory fuel rail right there. Um, we unhook that using, and that's the fuel line disconnect tool that we used. These are pretty universal. Um, you can pick these up at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, whatever. And as you can see, it's kind of a multi-tool. It has many different sizes. Um, so depending on the fuel line size will depend on which end of the tool you need to use um, but that's all it is cheap little tool time to take out the old hunk of crap plastic intake manifold so let's get her out just mark it nsfw all right one hunk of crap removed time to put the good stuff on boys all right so once you remove the plastic intake manifold this is what you're left with. Inside your Ram engine bay. So at this point, you wanna make sure you don't drop any bolts or anything down into cylinder heads. There's a good point where if you want, you can stuff some rags in there, um, but just be careful. You don't wanna drop anything into the cylinder heads like a bolt or anything like that. So we're gonna get ready to install a new Holly. All right, Mopar fam, as you can see, we have the lower Holly high ram manifold right here. We got a lot of it already plumbed up. We're still working on it. So we're gonna kind of go over a little bit. 
Um, we got the fuel injectors put in with the fuel rails. Um, as you, most of you guys know, we're running the FIC FIC 650 fuel injectors on Project Storm because it's a boosted application. Um, those injectors are working very well. Now on the back, again, this is a boosted application. So if you're an NA guy, you know you're not going to need some of this stuff. But this is the IET sensor. So this is where we have to locate it on the back of the Holly High Ram. And this sensor is out of, uh, I believe these will fit like a Neon SRT4 um, or even a Dodge Ram Cummins um, or a Ram Cummins IET sensor. This is a thread in IET sensor. Um, so it really don't matter which kind you get, but you need a thread in style IET sensor um, and it's gonna thread in right there. Now we did have to put in a reducer because the hole on the back of the manifold is larger than the sensor. Um, so you may need to get a reducer for that to thread in, depending on what sensor you decide to go with. Now, because we're running boost, um, if you're NA or nitrous, you're not gonna need this. You would just block this off or put a plug in here. But we have two uh, basically boost reference or vacuum uh, nipples here. So we got one is gonna go to our meth injection sensor. Um, so we can read boost and um, vacuum. So this will run our boost gauge and our meth injection system. And then the one on the bottom right here, the one on the bottom right here is gonna run over to our blow off valve for the Torque Storm Supercharger. And then finally, right here, we have a 90 degree elbow with a barbed fitting, and this is gonna run to our brake booster hose um, for the factory hose will, will actually reach over and plug onto the back of the manifold right here. So that is how we're running the brake booster hose. And then again, we're running boost on this truck. So this is the two bar map sensor and it fits right into the holly perfectly fine. And the two screws that they supply you with um, mount it to the holly manifold perfectly. And that's pretty much it. So that'll plug right on and that'll run our map sensor. And for the IET sensor, again, you know, this is a SRT4 thread in IET or a Cummins uh, diesel IET sensor that threads in. Now we do have to lengthen the wires. So as you can see, we have pre made up uh, basically a red and black wire and twisted them together with a drill. And I don't know, we made them up probably about three feet long or so, maybe longer. <clears throat> and when we get it all installed, once we get the manifold installed, this is where our factory IET plug was in the front. So the factory IET sensor plugged on, that's the connector. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna cut it off where we've actually had to lengthen it in the past already um, to fit the Torque Storm application setup that we have now. But we're gonna be cutting off this plug again and wiring the two wires that you've seen on the IET sensor harness that we fabbed up. We're gonna wire them into the harness of the vehicle um, in the front. So that'll be our IET sensor pickup. Now, as you can see my buddy Ryan over here, working on the fuel rails. So, for if you're gonna be running the stock RAM fuel system on the driver's side of the intake manifold, as you guys unhooked, as you know, we unhooked the factory fuel line, you're gonna need this special adapter from Earl's. And what this is, is this fitting, it's an AN fitting that'll thread into the Holly um, fuel rails and it supplies you with basically the same type of factory fuel line disconnect to plug your factory fuel line on. It'll plug right on just like stock. Plus, it has some lead weight as this fitting is a swivel, so you can swivel that around and it works well. Um, works perfectly, no leaks, it works great. So that's how you're gonna hook your fuel rail, your factory fuel line back up to the new intake manifold setup. 
And then on the passenger side, on the back of the fuel rail for that, you're gonna need a plug. Um, and this rail, like I said, it just gets a plug. And that is a... That's a Dash 8 O-ring plug. Um, you can pick them up at Holly. You can pick them up pretty much at any local speed shop or part store. Um, so you're gonna plug that. And then on the front, as you know, on the factory manifold, there's a stock line that crosses over to both fuel rails. And since that has to go away, what we're gonna do is just like I did on my truck frostbite we're gonna jump the two the uh, we're gonna jump the two fuel rails together in the front with this special hose um, that we ordered up and to make that work you're gonna need two of these fittings to thread into the Holly fuel rails so these two fittings are the same and those fittings are so those are the Earl's AN port adapters, um, part number, this is the package that it came with, um, so you're going to need two of these port adapters to jump the fuel rail, to jump the fuel rails together in the front, um, so there is that part number right there, two of those, and then again, you're going to need to order this hose, and the part number on that hose, um, so the hose that we found to work for our needs quickly is from fast that's the part number and it's just a basic fuel rail crossover line that's 8 a.m. Um, that's all there is to it and it is the perfect length to fit these fuel rails and the same exact hose that I used on frostbite um, so the only other thing I need to mention is all of these these AN fittings they are o-ring um, sealed into the fuel rails so you do want to put a little bit of oil or grease on them and then tighten them up um, the hose itself is a tapered seal so you do not need to lube that or anything or put anything on there um, just snug that up and that is pretty much it and then the manifold is plumbed and ready to roll one more thing to go over is have Ryan lift this up a little bit behind the oil cap there is a port uh, right here that needs to be plugged um, so you're going to use one of the supplied plugs from Holly to plug that hole and then on the passenger side what we're going to do temporarily which is how I have frostbite working um, we're putting one of the supplied uh, barbed nipples into this port right here and this is going to run our uh, breather filter that's just going to be um, there's gonna be a hose that slides on here. It comes up to, I don't know, about a foot up, just up to the top of the firewall, and then it has a breather filter on the end of it. Um, so that is how we're venting the crankcase and everything as of right now until later on we're gonna do a catch can and everything. But that's how I've been running Frostbite, and it's been working um, pretty good for the most part. And again, like I said, that's what we're doing right now until we do a proper catch can setup. Um, so stay tuned for that. But other than that, guys, that is it. So that's how the intake has to be plumbed up. Other than we got to get the lid on and then mount the throttle body and basically install it. So I know I've gotten a lot of questions of how I did it on Frostbite, and that is pretty much it. Identically done right here. Um, so we're going to continue on and uh, get this thing mounted up so stay tuned all right mopar fam we have the lower manifold completely plumbed up um, so that's what she looks like fuel rails on crossover hoses on injectors in uh, we have our boost hose for our blow-off valve tucked in behind the passenger side fuel rail this is our breather filter for right now. That's coming off the barbed nipple we installed. This is our wiring for our IET sensor. And again, blow off hose. 
going all the way behind the fuel rails and the injectors up to the front and we will cut and trim whatever we don't need up there once we get it mounted pretty dope again that's what the back looks like for at least a boosted application um you know <laughs> on the cheap we got all these fittings from our local ace hardware this is just brass uh plumbing fittings and this is how i got frostbite done up fuel hose right here this is the special fuel adapter ho uh special earl's fuel line adapter um to retain your stock fuel line it'll plug boom right on there and that is all there is to it fellas so last thing to go we gotta climb in the truck we're gonna mount the lower section on to the motor first um, after this is all mounted up then we will mount the top lid on after that's on then we're going to mount the throttle body on and then do all the intake plumbing um, or pressure pipes i should say for a supercharger and then we got to mount the blow off valve so we got a little bit more to go but that's it she's starting to come around starting to come around getting everything ready to go ryan's about to climb down in the hole we call it and uh get it done so here we go all right mopar fam just wanted to give you a quick little tip for those that don't know it um installing these studs that comes with the holly high ram um they do give you studs to install the lower part of the intake manifold is you can see we're doing one stud right there um quick little trick if you take two nuts and actually jam them together um, as in tighten them against each other then you can take a ratchet or wrench or whatever and actually screw the stud in very easily um, otherwise it can kind of be a pain um, so if you take two nuts jam them together <laughs> literally then you can thread the stud down pretty simple um, as you can see it's going down so quick little tip just wanted to show that for those that don't know works awesome all right mopar fam she's looking a little better whole project storm's getting there so we got the holly high ram completely bolted on all the bolts and hardware is torqued down uh, you can see the little blue breather filter back there on the left side corner passenger side like I said, that's our breather setup for right now um, until we get our catch can stuff all set up. That's just what we're going to do. Crossover line for the front of the two fuel rails. That's how it runs, just underneath the top lid. And <clears throat> now we just got to work on getting our throttle body mounted, um, get our wiring done for the for the uh, IET sensor plug and then this truck has AC so we're gonna sit here and try to figure out what we're gonna do about making these lines fit because obviously as you can see they are right in the way of where our throttle body is gonna be and our plumbing and pressure pipes so we're gonna have to finagle them away a little bit so stay tuned almost there but project storm daily driver looks like a hot rod now boys all right mopar fam we are almost done all we gotta do we're gonna put the front grill on and the little plastic radiator top cover up here other than that project storm she looks like a hot rod boys holly intake holly high ram all the way installed uh, we got the air to air intercooler setup that i built on it all the pipes you can see how they run run through the passenger side onto the cx racing intercooler that i used to have on frostbite that intercooler is actually for a fox body mustang but as you can see 
it's a pretty large one I mean it takes up the whole front end you really can't put a bigger intercooler in there um, it, it works good especially for the money but that is it that's the Holly High Ram on Project Storm yeah definitely don't look like the same truck now under the hood looks like we just put a big huge crate motor in here it's amazing what the Holly High Ram does for the appearance wise not to mention the performance too heck yeah eventful day well was it worth all the trouble there guy we'll see <laughs> <laughs> no it's gonna be worth it well last time out we ran best time what was it 13 1626 13, stock cam stock converter stock six speed ram truck as we all know those transmissions ain't the best um four by four heavy street tires she ran pretty good at the track last time for what we got done to it so we're gonna hopefully see what the holly high ram adds to it i think it's gonna be good for at least a few tenths maybe more so there you go at mopar fam we're pretty much done. Um, all we gotta do is put the grill on. So I'm gonna save you all the agony of watching us put a stupid grill on. But that's it for the Holly High Ram. That's the fittings, the parts that you pretty much need to do a boosted application at least. Uh, NA setup's a little bit easier. You don't need quite as many fittings. Um, you just need a plug really to plug most of the ports on the back of the manifold. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, give the video a thumbs up, comment down below what you think of the install and the Holly High Ram, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys on the next one.